The JT was one tank I never ever thought I would own. Experience with puppies had shown me that the JP100 was arguably the worst tier 10 and not worth playing. The JT for its own part was slow, easy to pen, and although it had a ferocious gun it just didn't look fun to play. The problem with this is I based my assumptions on the JP off of watching puppies play it, and puppies if they're going to be anything that are absolute garbage at any given tank. At some point, I decided to try out the JB100 for myself on test, and actually was blown away by just how fucking good it is. In fact, it is probably one of the better tier 10 tank destroyers if it's played properly. Of course, the played properly part is what gave puppies problems. Now, because I'm not really looking to spend enough money on the game to skip an entire tier 9, especially a serviceable tier 9, I decided I may as well go through the JT and try it out. My suspicions were confirmed. It is slow, it can't turn, it has no camo. Every single penning shot to your front will hit your engine because that's where puppies aim for the transmission in the front. The gun is actually really good, but the tank has a lot of other problems. With that said, it's not as bad as I expected it to be, and if you are allowed to put that gun to work, it's really magical. As I was saying with the front plate and the transmission, that is where puppies aim. They know they can pen the lower front plate, most of them probably know that transmission's there. Now, on a KT, which is basically the same chassis, just with a slightly, well not slightly, but with a thinner upper front plate, you can pin there, and you can also pin the machine gun ball, although most people shoot at the Kapala or the turret. In other words, the King Tiger is a veritable plethora of weak spots on the front that you could hit any given one of them at any real distance. The only hard to hit one, I guess, is the the cupola at longer ranges and the machine gun ball at longer ranges, but the KT's hull isn't actually that strongly armoured. It just seems that way because a lot of the tier 8 mediums don't have the best pen in the world. The JT does have better armour, as I said, but the problem with that is most people don't realise that their guns will pen it anyway. Most tier, uh, tier 9 and 10 mediums can pen this more or less anywhere on the hull. But because people have sort of become conditioned to shoot at the lower hull of these things, that's all they do. So every hit to your front will be the lower hull, and every hit there is significantly likely to fuck up your transmission. Now, one obvious way of fixing this is to just be hull down, but unfortunately you can't always be hull down. Especially if you're being forced to actually push on a city map, as I am here. This is much better suited to sitting in the back and just pouring out damage from long range, hence the binoculars, but sometimes you have to get up in people's faces because other people, say this M103 who's been trying to bait me all game, just won't do it. I cross over while the AMX is either on reload or not paying attention, I'm not sure which. I did take hits there that should have been the 103s because he was hiding behind me on that crescent road. He should have been in front of me the whole time. It's not like he doesn't have armor. This does show though what this gun is capable of. The platform I, I think is absolutely terrible. It is an awful platform. I would rather have this gun on nearly any other chassis. But the gun itself is just incredible. It's the same gun the Waffenträger E100 gets. To put that in perspective, it just doesn't have the autoloader. Let's take a look at its AP. 276 pen. That's pretty much the same pen as the T30 has, if I recall correctly. 560 alpha. Not. Uh, I think it's 490 that the E75 has. Pretty sure it's 490. Yeah, this has more. And. On the APCR we have 352 pen 560 alpha, so that's fucking good, that's really good. Some of the best pen in the game, it's also one of the fastest flying rounds in the game. So at longer ranges you don't really even need to lead things a bit. 
HE is of course HE, so it's not even worth mentioning. So what do I think of this tank overall? Well, I think that if you're actually in a position where you can sit back and take shots at targets that expose themselves over and over, it is a really strong tank. Really, really strong. The further back you sit, the less of a problem your lack of camouflage and lack of armor is. The less of a problem your lack of mobility is because you're not going to be flanked by tanks that are several hundred meters away in front of you. The problem is you can't always sit back and shoot from long range in pub matches. If you could, then a lot of tanks that are currently very weak in the game, or at least are not favored by the, the puppy hive mind, they would be a lot stronger. The main flaw of the Waffenträger E100, for example, is that it has to sit back and shoot. The moment it drives in, it has, it has a very good hull. The hull armor is excellent. It has way more mobility than it should have any business having gun handling. Okay. The Waffenträger is actually really good at close range. The only problem is it has a long reload, so if you bounce or miss any shots, you're in trouble. And also, the gun shield is really thin. Now, in itself, that's not a problem, because as you might remember when I was first playing it on test, a lot of the time people would shoot at other stuff, so you could afford to tank a couple hits. The problem is now, everyone is so sick of being vaporized by fucking Waffenträgers before they even get a chance to react, that the second one of those things is spotted, everyone focus fires it. So, and, and most people know to aim for the gun shield. So that's what happens. Um, this is a little better off in that regard. It doesn't have much side armor. 80mm sloped at 25 degrees, same as the King Tiger. Rear armor, same thing. 80mm uh, sloped at... I'm pretty sure it's also 25 and maybe 30. Um, the casemate's actually really well armored, the front of it at any rate. You can pen it with gold rounds out of a lot of tanks, but against regular uh, credit rounds, it's, it's not going to be very easy to pen at all, especially with that quite large gun mantlet waving around in front of it. The hull is kind of inconsistent. The upper plate is good against pretty much any tier 8. Uh, some of the weaker gun to tier 9 mediums, but when I say weaker gun, I mean weaker pen, so things like the M46, the E50, the things that don't have tier 10 guns, basically. The T54, yeah, the, the T-54 is kind of weak against it too because heat has trouble with the angle and AP obviously has trouble with the thickness of it. Things like the Centurion, the Type 61, the Wheezy 120, they will all punch straight through the upper front plate of a JT without even stopping to think. They just, it may as well not exist for all they care. And you may have noticed me in basically every Centurion match ever dispatching JTs with complete ease because it, it just goes straight through them. The lower plate, not so good. Uh, I'm, I can't recall offhand the exact thickness. I'm pretty sure on the King Tiger it's upper plate's 150, lower plate's 100. On this, I think the upper plate is 200, the casemate's 250. I think the lower plate might be 150. Even if it's 150 or if it's still 100, it doesn't make much difference. Everything is going to pen you there. And when they do pin you there, they're going to probably hit your transmission, which is probably going to set you on fire. Well, I say probably, I'm, I'm exaggerating here. If you carry an automatic extinguisher, which I do, that gives you a bonus against fire rolls. So I, it gives you, I believe, 10% less chance of catching fire upon the uh, engine or transmission being hit. Of course, that doesn't carry over to fuel tanks. Fuel tank fires are something you can't prevent. The other thing is, I think the engine has like a base 20% fire chance or something in that ballpark. So it's not going to catch fire every time it's hit, but it's it's fairly likely. At any rate, it is going to fuck up your engine, and driving this thing is painful enough without having a damaged or broken engine. What's more concerning is if tanks just consistently put shots into that area, they are going to eventually break your engine and set you on fire. It's just a matter of time. If you put multiple shots into the same area, that module's going to break sooner or later. That's why if, if an autoloader cli starts clipping at you and hits your rack, you repair it and run. Um, because typically the next shot will blow your turret off. Or blow your tank up or whatever you're playing. Hit points. Eh, 1800's not bad for a tier 9 tank destroyer. I believe the T-30 has something like 1650. Um, so it, it does have good hit points. 
actually quite high hit points for a tank destroyer. As I've said, the mobility is awful. The camo is non-existent. It's really quite sluggish and painful to play. This thing is a pure gun platform, not in the sense of the Waffenträger Panzer IV, which is, if, if you get spotted, you're dead. It can't possibly hope to bounce anything. It can't really escape. You know, those things are, I suppose, pure gun platforms. In that sense, they have to position and fire from long range. But this thing is a pure gun platform in the sense that you want to be sitting there and just tanking shots hull down while employing your gun. Um, this thing is to tier 9, I suppose, as you could say the T29 is to tier 7. The T29 can just go hull down and tank shots forever while, you know, it's, it's not very agile or maneuverable. It easily gets flanked. This is similar. You will easily get flanked, but as long as you get hull down so that you can't be penned in the hull, you can just pour out damage like you would not believe. I mean, this was a pretty quick game, pretty uneventful. I still did over 4k damage, and that's pretty straightforward in this tank. It's something you can expect fairly often. Now, will I be keeping this thing once I'm finished to grind? Yeah, probably. Simple reason, I, I just got to catch them all. That's my philosophy on tanks. Very rarely do I sell a tank anymore. Will I be playing it? after I get the JP100? Probably not. Maybe every now and then, but not very often. Um, the simple reason is I like the JP2 a lot better. It's more along my sort of playstyle. It's fast. It doesn't have much armor, but it's really fucking quick, and it has a really big gun. So you can move that gun around from one side of the map to the other really quickly and prop up failing flanks. This thing cannot prop a failing flank because it can't even get there before the game's over. Um, I've had a couple of matches where I had to try and carry in this. It just doesn't happen. It just does not even begin to happen. You don't have the mobility. You don't have the camera. You don't have anything. Uh, especially if there's still mediums or lights alive or arty. If, in fact, if there's anything still alive, but particularly things that can get around you or, you know, pound you from behind cover. You're in deep shit. You won't be able to carry in this. Um, the JPE is a little easier to carry in, even though it's a huge target, and similarly to this, it is painfully slow. It has that bullshit E100 side armor with the spacing over the tracks and also the sloping on the casemate. The front armor is excellent, and depending on the angle, even the rear armor can give some tanks trouble. Plus, you just you don't want to drive in front of that gun. The JT is scary to drive in front of because it does have a very big, hard-hitting gun, and it does fire very, very quickly for a gun of this size, but it's not a 1,050 hit point sucker punch like the JPE is, which will one-shot, um, you know, a lot of a lot of lower tier tanks on a high roll. Um, in fact, I think if it high rolls, it can possibly one-shot at least some of the tier, not, or, uh, yeah, tier 8, sorry, tier 8 mediums and tank destroyers. Tier 9s are going to be left with only a few hundred hit points after they get hit by it. Even Tier 10s are going to lose half their health to a shot from that thing. It's just, it's not fun to drive in front of. And a lot of people are so afraid of that gun, they will not drive in front of it, even if they know it's on reload, or even if they know that the, the, the likelihood of it hitting them is very low because they're driving something fast enough to get around it. The JT, you don't have that luxury. People will take the chance more often than not. And so you will eventually just get swarmed. There's nothing much you can do about it. So, in closing, this is a tank I would recommend playing in platoons, or at least playing very carefully, because you can't rely on puppies for support, and you need support in this tank. It puts out a lot of damage very quickly, so if you're looking to do that, then this is, this is I guess, your answer. It's not really fun to play. I'm going to say it. Maybe there are some people who enjoy big, slow things, but I'm just going to say it is absolute suffering for me as a medium tank driver to try and drive this thing anywhere. Once I get to a good position and start using the gun, it's great, but actually trying to move in this is just so frustrating. It, I feel like I'm being held, held back, like somebody's clutching at my ankle, dragging me under the water. But... I don't know, maybe as I get used to it, I'll start to like it more. At the moment, I'm kind of ambivalent. Uh, I like its gun. I like its hit points. Its armor, I could take or leave, and I absolutely despise its terrible mobility. But 
we'll see how we go. Maybe we'll see some more matches of this, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, all I know is that I really do want the E100, or the, uh, the JP100, sorry, after playing it on test, because I had a lot of fun with that thing. And uh, I suspect just the sheer size and, and fuck you factor of that gun will offset a lot of the things that don't quite get offset by the JT's gun. Anyway, as ever, thanks for watching. If you are into this kind of stuff, there will be more for the foreseeable future because I, I have problems and can't stop uploading all the tanks videos. And there has been plenty previously, so if you uh, get bored on a rainy day, there are <laughs> hundreds upon hundreds of terrible videos of me being terrible at this terrible game. I'd like to think that you might have enjoyed this video. I certainly hope so, or that you maybe learned something from it. And I wish you the best of luck on the field. Thanks for watching. See you next time.